It's Tuesday, March 29th, and the time for your Bobby List today morning news update. One of the island's teachers' unions has expressed concern that parents are not properly representing the interests of their children regarding the delayed Caribbean Examinations Council's test for 2020. And leading parent student advocate Paula Ann Moore, who also shares the union's concerns, said she is disappointed and disheartened that adults, regional governments and the educational arm of CARICOM have abandoned their children. We get more in this Emmanuel Joseph report. Moore, who continues to be a fierce advocate for parents and students in the region in the fight for fairness in the CXC exams, said Monday it has become very difficult to mobilize people to maintain pressure on the council. She said it appears to be a cultural hangover where people seem to be afraid to be visible. This is the third academic year that the pandemic has affected learning and education. And I, I am just deeply disappointed, very, very deeply disappointed from CARICOM, the COSAD arm of CARICOM, our, um, our government in the region, um, and yes, our parent bodies. I think, I think all of us are accountable for the fact that we have not we have not advocated more forcefully to hold CXC accountable and to have CXC modify their examination to be more fair. As for the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, President Mary Redman is urging parents to act now regarding the timing and structure of the CXC exams, which she contended the council has failed to adequately address. This cohort of examination students have been the most negatively affected because of COVID. And it is time that parents in the region take up the interests of their children and seek to represent those interests at the levels where justice can be done as it relates to the readiness of students for CXC exam and the insistence that CXC makes the type of accommodation that will not disadvantage the students any further. That was President of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, Mary Redman, and I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. Senator Elizabeth Thompson has suggested that the coordinating and oversight expected of the country's four senior ministers will help to reduce inefficiencies and prevent significant challenges for projects in the pipeline. She was speaking in the Senate on Monday as she supported a resolution to approve the ministers and parliamentary secretaries' remuneration and allowances order 2022. Senator Thompson said while politicians are often the target of criticism when projects are not executed correctly, they were often not the ones to blame. Often one hears policy articulated or promises made. And while it is the politicians who articulate and bear the responsibility and the blame when there is not delivery, there is often a tremendous gap between the policy intention and the policy implementation. And it is not the politicians who are responsible for the actual day-to-day -day implementation. And therefore, I see this as a measure intended to structure and deliver on implementation and on the commitments made, the policy commitments made in the manifesto which the Barbados Labour Party presented to the public of Barbados in the last election. This means that the ministers do actually have to coordinate, that they actually have these, these senior ministers to work with strategic plans. They are responsible for broad areas, governance, business development, social and environmental matters, and infrastructure planning and development.
An independent senator has cautioned the government against adding layers to the cost and administration of projects with the new senior minister's positions. Although Senator Lindell Nurse supported the resolution to approve ministers and parliamentary secretaries' renumeration and allowances order 2022, he expressed a reservation. I think that any government obviously has the right to organize its administration in the way it best sees fit. Um, and I think that in this case, if, if, if government is, is, is confident, if, if government is uh, sure that by going this route of adding uh, this other layer of senior uh, ministers, will assist in making government more efficient and in getting, creating the environment in which um, the opportunity to improve doing business in Barbados, then I think uh, that, is, that is fine and you can't argue with that. If on the other hand, it ends up where you create, just end up creating other layers of administration, creating additional costs of running the government, then obviously, in my view, it will not be effective. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen. Natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morbi, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To news from the region, St. Lucia's sole electricity supplier, Lucilec, tells customers to brace for increased prices. More from DBS News. The St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited Lucilec has announced an increase in the fuel surcharge for electricity bills. The announcement, which came on Friday from the company's managing director, Trevor Luizzi, was expected in the wake of the increase in gas prices on Monday last week. According to the company, its fuel price hedging program and renewable energy efforts to date is not enough to buffer the oil prices that have almost doubled since the start of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. This current fuel crisis is a very difficult situation for everyone and is caused by external factors over which Lucilec has no control. Through our hedging program, we are able to lock in the price we pay for some of our fuel. This means that what we pay for a percentage hedge remains the same despite the price of oil on the world market. The balance of the fuel purchased is determined by the current market price. As a result, when there are significant changes in the price of oil, as is occurring right now, because of the continued unrest in Ukraine, it will affect what customers pay for electricity on a month-to-month -month basis. The price Lucilec pays for fuel is factored into customer bills through the fuel surcharge or the fuel cost adjustment that is applied to the units of electricity customers use every month. It is added to the basic energy rates applied to each unit of electricity we sell. Members of the public have been reacting to the announcement of the increased cost of their electricity bills. I don't know why them people do that after things so hard like that they raise in current and people. Why are we taking the money for we to pay the government? I find that the like should not raise prices because they've been raising it so much, so many times. It's like every time there's an increase, they pass it on to customers. And finally, on the international front, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs is reporting that Somalia is currently one of the most severely drought-impacted countries in the Horn of Africa. Humanitarian Coordinator for Somalia, Adam Abdemula, says some 4.5 million citizens are directly affected by the drought 
and about 700,000 people have been displaced. The country has seen three consecutive failed rainy seasons and the fourth uh, rainy season that is supposed to start in April and continue through June is also projected to be below average. And if that happens, then we are he talking here about a risk of famine. As we speak now, 1.4 million under five years of age are severely malnourished. And if we don't step up our intervention, it is projected that 350,000 of them will perish by the summer of this year. The situation cannot be more dire than that. So I call on all those who are able to contribute, and that includes the Somali diaspora, the business community, the traditional and non-traditional donors, everyone, everyone, to act and to act now. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.